All right, let me just grip it and rip it. Oh, yeah, daddy. Oh, okay. All right. Get Discord. And, oops, hold on. Balls are on stream. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, cool. That's just, that was just you. It's like I had the rest of the thing soon, so okay. That's fun. All right, so let me just make sure. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're starting in three, two, one. Transition. Hey, there it goes. There we are. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Hardcore Nerdcore Wrestling. I'm your host, Rhythm Bastard, here with my co-commentator, Ernie. All right, there we go. So, um, now, despite all the kerfluffles you have seen, not me, like, switching to the Discord view too early, I mean, you know, um, the weird promos, uh, you know, other than that, things have been going pretty good here, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I... I'd say so. Uh, you know, we've we got you know the the Baba Wagas came back you know in full force last week. Uh, you know, we saw some good matches out of you know Robert Prophet, Dean Off students, uh, Chris Redfield finally making his like you know official official like debut as a roster member here in an exciting uh, Resident e Evil uh, uh, match. Yeah, um, the Nivenfield uh, Day Memorial match. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, we saw just the birth of a dominant, albeit definitely dysfunctional, uh, trios in the uh, Jilted X's. Yes, always. And uh, then, what a hell of a of a uh, closer when Jonesy and Neil Breen both went the absolute distance. It was an incredible match. Like, I mean, I think it should have gotten five stars. We're giving it five stars. Principle. Out of principle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's probably where the night should have, uh, should have closed off on, but, uh... Oh, boy. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, tails, just fucking tails stuff, uh... You know how it is, uh, impromptu, unsanctioned couples counseling matches and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, this time, Knights was able to survive. Yeah, like, kudos to Knights, you know? I mean, the, that, yeah, N Knights was really the, uh, Knights was really the, you know, the, the force behind, um, uh, the, 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 the Midnight's, and, you know, he came through in the end. Of course, of course. And, you know, uh. Really, uh, really leaves a bit of egg on the face, doesn't it, Tails? You know, you, you go out of your way and all, talk all that ad shit, all that jazz, and, uh, you drop the ball. No, yeah, you know, it's a calculated error. Uh, sometimes what your, uh, weird robot doesn't account for is the power of, I was gonna say love, maybe friendship, but I don't know what the fuck Knights is powered by. My guess, ketamine. Okay, that's fair. The K special, y'all. Yep, the K special. But let's not let that distract us from a another barn burner of a card we've got this week. Yeah, we got, um, and I think our main event for tonight, we got, you know, a couple uh, number one contenders matches. We got some really solid matchups this week. And uh, our main event for tonight is the trios championship between R.E.D. and B12. That's going to be... And it's, that's going to be an exciting match, you know. Uh, you know, R.E.D. have been on a really good run as the trio's O's champions. But, you know, B12 has started gradually getting that momentum back, Act, you know. The, and it's nice to kind of... They're starting start to figure going. out which numbers are the best numbers. Yes, of, of course. That's 
That's the thing you always got to keep in mind with your trios is you want to set your team up accordingly with a good, like, team comp, you know, as it were. Uh, there was, again, big questions with REDs comp because they didn't really have, like, you know, the traditional uh, fast one, technical one, and strong one. Right. But it's been – it's actually been serving them well. Well, hell, so let's see what B12 is going to be coming in with. Yeah, and uh, like every game, since I haven't played Overwatch in a year, uh, you don't need a healer. You can just go all DPS, and it'll be fine. Up next, exactly. up next we have Bayonetta versus Strong Bad. Ooh. And we're going to cut to the ring right now. Yeah. Right now. Any minute. I'm sorry, it takes the cameras are warming up. There we go. And there she is. Making her way to the ring, the Umbral Witch herself, Bayonetta. Sashay Shantae Panther on the runway. Wow, women. Yes. Oh, yeah. Snatch that wig. Yeah. Out outdone, though, by former trios champion in strong bad oh strong bad had had a great run as part of the uh trios champion the burninators and i think you know he's looking to uh he's looking to recapture that as part of the singles division so you know wish yeah, him all I, the best of luck of course you know definitely the fans have been wanting to see strong bad get a little more sing single work with him Ooh, a nice monkey flip from bayonetta and a quick snap suplex too Nope. When Bayonetta Referring. goes into witch time, she is unstoppable. That That is true. Mm. Nice kick out from Bayonetta. Also joining a, us in the ring, Ing, right? I now is newest acquisition, Referee Badoof. Yes. Uh, everybody loves Badoof. Uh, course, we might bring course. in UB for a match. It's certainly because uh, they're still on, you know, medical leave. Not because I forgot to change it. It's fine. I... HCNCW is very particular when it comes to the medical leave. Yeah. Down to the matches. Exactly. Oh, nice Irish whip from Strong Bad. Whoa! Got the middle oh, on that one. Big airtime on that one. Uh oh. She. Up. Oh, Strong Bad was able to kick out for that one. Nice drop toe hold into a Senton bomb. But a nice arm drag from Bayonetta. Sorry, big quiet this match. I accidentally took a bite of beef jerky. No, you're good. You're good. Uh oh. And Bayonetta drops Strong Bad with a pile driver. Hold him up. But Strong Bad able to kick out quick. Ooh, into a DDT. Ooh, stand ending press. But Bayonetta still able to kick out. Slide eyes in between each Strong Bad's leg. Oh, but Strong Bad catches her with a DDT. And a Into another Centon. <laughs> and another DDT from Bayonetta. A lot of very uh, if a lot of a lot of technical wrestling here. You know, you have uh, when you have a witch who can just fuck with time and a wrestleman who answers emails. You don't know what to expect, really. But yeah, you're not expecting a lot of power, but you know, you're you're gonna expect something. It's more about innovation than uh than, you know, overwhelming strength. I mean, remember, remember where Bayonetta comes from. She is a platinum um, game icon. And we and we all know, oh, if there's one thing platinum um, game characters are known for, it's just their raw style ability. Yeah. Almost like it's graded on an A to S scale. Sometimes a triple S. Yeah. Oh. Strong Bad able, able to dodge out, out of the way, but Bayonetta needs to be careful because Strong Bad has his own own little, little style to him, too. Oh, yeah. Got such cool style. Uh, again, still able to kick out. We want a dragon screw ooh, from Strong Bad. Oh. And a scissors kick from Bayonetta. Hi, kick it, girlfriend. Oh, but Strong Bad able to catch her. So Bayonetta quick to recover. Feeds Bayonetta DDT and another Centon from Strong Bad. Trying to get gay, uh, Bayonetta to the corner. Mm, but Strong Bad at still groggy from that sister Abigail. 
Oh, but he hits a Hurricane Rana, but Bayonetta's still able to kick out. I think that was just a straight up counter. Now, now Bayonetta's working the legs. Oh, but Strawbat dodging out of the way of the drop kick. And another pop of Hurricane Rana. Oh, these two are going. Oh, what's Strong Bad doing? And a top row poison Rana! Oh, man! And another pop of Hurricane Rana! Strong Bad is not afraid to go witch time himself, folks. Yeah, like, he definitely wants that triple S combo. Let's go, has... Bayo. Let's go. Let's go, Bayo. Let's go. I'm just impersonating oh, the chat. Into a tilt a whirl. Hurricane Rana again! But Bayonetta able to kick out. Oh, Bayonetta dodging out of the way. Oh, but Strong Bad able to counter. Oh, and Bayonetta with the Gorilla Press Cutter. She's not all, only stylish, but she's also strong. I think oh. I might have accidentally set this one for uh, submissions only. This is an I Quit match. I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. Bandit goes back to the top rope and lands the a shoot ooting star. Or was that a swan song? Counters. Able to kick out though. Ooh, and drop strong bat again. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure somebody here has Oh, and she got some airtime on that one too. Oh, the nice roll-up from Strong Bad. Ooh, and an Insiguri. Oh. They're trying to go over pins. Oh, what Bayonetta has planned. Ooh, and a vicious Vertebraker. But another Dragon Screw from Strong Bad. Into a Senton Bomb. Ooh, big kick from Bayonetta. Oh, finally a submission. Oh, nope. but Strong Bad able to reach each the ropes. Yeah, that's a rope break. So we at least know Bayonetta has a submission move, but does Strong Bad. He's got a super kick, though, that's for sure. Oh, Strong Bad is exhausted. But he's still fighting, folks. Yeah, he's still hitting those sentons. He's putting that uh, twist to good use. Listen, we're going to work that twist like the Iron Sheik. Yep. Fucking bullshit. Uh-oh. What a big slam from Strong Bad. So it seems... Uh-oh. What Bayonetta got planned? She's got Strong Bad on the top rope. Ooh, and a... Her, and a poison run of her own from the top rope. Oh, able to... All right, now we got Strong Bad coming, making his way back in the ring. Not out for too long, because he does need to finish the match. Oh, looks like that's some interference from Ernie. That's okay. Bayonetta delivering the slams over and over again, and a drop kick right to the face. This is a hell of a match. Yeah. Ooh, and another gorilla press cutter. Hmm. Uh oh, she's Ooh, like that chick from the waitresses. She knows what boys like. She knows what uh -oh. guys want. But Bayonetta still able to get out of there. Uh oh. Oh, now Strong Bad just stomping a mud hole. Ooh, into a Bronco Buster. Ooh, nice Pele kick from Strong Bad. Oh, and a nice reversal from Strong Bad, but it leaves him worse for wear.
Nice drop kick from Bayonetta. Ooh, another dragon screw from Strong Bad. Yo, know, Strong Bad has a lot of really good uh, tactical skills. More than you'd expect. Mm -hmm. But the quite. Uh oh. Ooh, what a move from Bayonetta. Uh oh, but now he caught Strong Bad in the snap in in the in the weave snatcher yep. and he has to tap out that's the name of the move now the weave snatcher yep absolutely seized taken repossessed and what a match <clears throat> it was mm. incredible it's a really good match you know both of them really went for it and i'm glad i'm glad you know i'm glad too that was a hell of a match from from hell from some hella good competitors. Oh yeah, it was it was amazing. Uh, up next we have. Uh, up next we have Tracer versus Toad. Ooh. Yes, that is the match that is next. Uh, I All see right. a. Uh... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say yeah, Tracer versus Toad. Uh, both of them, you know, Tracer has had some success. I think she w made it to the. Uh, she was one of the finalists in her bracket in the, um, you know, the number one contenders league. She had a really good, good running. She was also a former trios champion in her own right. And also, and then both having, and now going up against Toad, who maybe hasn't had a lot of six success as in his own right. But you know what? There is one thing I will give him, though. And that is because I've played a lot of Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. And while definitely um, Tracer might have the speed advantage for sure, if there's one thing Toad has going for him, which anybody who's played Mario Kart will let you know, it's that his acceleration is just incomparable to anyone else. Oh, so no, it's incredible, yeah. Maybe we, So maybe Tracer can maintain more, can have more of a consistent maintenance of high speed, Toad, however, what he has to his advantage because accelerate because not to get too nerdy, but acceleration is basically how fast as velocities change. Toad can turn earn it on, on in a drop of a dime, and we're just gonna have to see if Lena's gonna be able to uh, to respond to it. Mm. You know, I I don't I'm not entirely sure myself if Tracer is you know has the wherewithal to uh, to you know. Uh, go for it, but I, you know, what we've seen uh, other things. We, I mean, we've seen all kinds of things happen before, so I, it's not outside the realm of possibility. So you know, we'll just wait and see because sometimes a random match is a great match. I mean, case in point, last match. Yeah. All right, and we're taking y'all to the ring right now. Hold on, my cursor just decided to fuck up. And in comes the e wrestler that both simultaneously sounds like a 40 year old chain smoker and a 12 year old on Xbox Live. Oh, uh -oh. and here come the trumpets. Hmm. It comes Tracer, the cavalry. Now, what cavalry has. It I'm sorry, I was a little thrown off by missing my cursor. Has the cavalry arrived? I don't know. We will see. Again, let's fight. Oh. Did you remember, remember to not set this I quit? <laughs> no, yeah, no. It's not a give up only match. Okay, cool. Oh, they're tying up in the test of strength. And Toad getting the better this time. Oh, able to get out of the way. Another test of strength? You know, and Toad, once again, yeah, getting the and, you know, if you remember from a Doki Doki Panic, Toad does have the higher strength rating, so he can pull up the turn up to the speed of light. Yep. Ooh, what a dodge from Toad! But again, this is what I mean. In Tracer, still able to maintain a more consistent speed, but Toad able to to turn on just that quick, like, like, like fast muscle response, though. Hmm. Okay, they're squaring up. Oh, nice reversal from Tracer. But a big boot from Toad. They're tying up. And a snap suplex from Tracer. Oh, but Toad just slams her down. Oh, they're circling. 
Tracer able to reverse though. Going for the pin. Only one count this time. Big slap up in the face. Ooh, and a nice trip from Toad. Toad seems to have this, you know, pretty well under his control. It, the, the question is, will Tracer be able to mount that comeback? And a nice DDT from Toad. With a, with a drop, with an elbow drop. Oh, but Tracer her counters. Ooh, and she whips the spear, though. Again, the, uh, Toad goes up top. And the elbow drop. Flying elbow. Flying up. Oh, big reversal from Tracer. Oh, you know, as someone who's watched a lot of Overwatch League, this is how you utilize Tracer the best. You go hunting for the back line and pick up your opponents, and then you get in on them with the pulse bomb where you can handle, you know, the bigger, the tanks and the support line. But this is a one-on-one -on -one fight. So, I mean, Toad is a genetic freak, and he might have the 75% advantage here. That he is. Oh, Toad's what's got what's Toad got planned? Oh, and a nice reversal from Tracer. Oh, opting to just as as come down out from the top rope. Ooh, but a big belly to belly from Toad. Ooh, and another belly belly to Portobello. There we go. Yeah, a Portobello to belly. Portobello to belly. Portobello to belly. Okay, good. Don't worry, folks. We'll eventually get. We'll eventually come up with more dumb names for our, for wrestling moves soon. Yep. Oh, he's going back up. And a flying elbow. Oh, but he's slow to get back up, though. Whips Tracer into the, into the turnbuckle. Nice side B. Oh, but Tracer able to reverse. Oh, what she's got planned. Ooh, with just some Ric Flair-esque chops to the chest. Giving Toad a lot of backhands here in the back corner. And they take it outside the ring. <laughs> Ooh, and she's just twisting that ankle. Ooh, and a nice, nice axe hand handle from Toad. And they both, both make their way back into the ring. And just more Ric Flair chops onto Toad. Maybe Toad should close his vest. <laughs> Maybe. Uh-oh. They're tying up. So brings her up and a power bomb. Is this gonna be it? Ooh, it is. Toad with the victory. Yeah, this was the one time that Toad didn't end up dying, and you know what? It's all the better for it. You know what? Good for him. Able to finally e e end the dry streak. Yeah. You know, good for good for Toad. Good for Toad. Good for Toad indeed. All right. So, oh, what? What's next on the card? Up next, we have the number one contender for the uh, tag team match next week. Two very new teams to Hardcore Nerd. Well, they're not new wrestlers, but they are new teams. We have the team of Moon Knights. Uh -huh. A team uh, of Sailor Moon and Knight. And we have a team of uh, calling themselves the Sexatronics. Let me guess. Is that Aaron E. Shurns and Midnight Love? Yeah, it's Aaron E. Shurns and Midnight Love. <sighs> of course. So who do you got? I I mean, uh, you know, you have not... I, I think Knight... You know, if we can see Knight uh, fight off Would You Rather Bot last week, then I think this is his to lose. Y yeah. At the same time, I think the fact so yeah, the question about about Knights Knights' head headspace ace right now definitely has a lot to do with the probably wondering where their head heads at after the ambush. Um, um, you know they might not all be a hundred percent there, but at the same time, being able to survive, would you rather bot uh, in a three on one and get out out of their scot free might be able to tip the momentum into their favor, especially being teamed with one of of HTNCW's best undercard champions in Sailor Moon. Yeah. yeah. But, Sailor, sorry, Moon, Sailor Moon had a pretty solid run. I think Sonic's run might have been longer. Uh, I, no, I actually did the numbers. Waluigi. No, Waluigi's might have been longer. 
No, no, no. Actually, no. It was t Sailor Moon tied with Sonic for the longest run. Okay. Well, no, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely successful. So, yeah, it looks like it's Moon Knights to lose. Yeah. And so, but also you should not, I count out Midnight Love and Aaron e Assurance. It's, there is a lot of, there, again, obviously Midnight Love's coming in with a lot of strength. Aaron e Assurance has shown, you know, a really strong technical side. But all that being said, I just feel like the momentum might be, is more in Knights' favor, especially with this matchup. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah, I, oh. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we've seen weirder things happen before, but I, my money's on Moon Knights. Yeah, I, I probably have to agree with you, but only one way to find out. Yeah, and uh, we are going to cut to the ring now. Cutting now. And there, there they come, the Moon Knights. No relation into to the super to the uh, to the hero and all of the memes we you all love. Yeah, I mean they're they're not in search of Dracula's fucking money. Uh, not yet, at least. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, just showing both of them showing off. Definitely, they're coming in with a lot of confidence, but it's not to be undone by just sex a chronic do we really have to call them that they i we suggested a couple other names um but they just said sexatronic over and over again and they kept pounding on the desk uh sexatronic 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 over and over again and they both were very in, very insistent that i check google image search for them and then i said no so yeah. I, I let them have sexatronics just to get them the fuck out of my office, which is my bedroom, which is yeah. which uh, shouldn't be my office. But uh, Midnight Love says that's where he has his office. Yeah, you you you, you know it's I'm the the desk took about two weeks to disinfect afterwards. Yeah, it was. Anyways, again a classic matchup between in between in the former members of the Midnight's. Ooh, and a big drop kick. Definitely no love lost between these two. Yeah, this is going to be a straight up match. They are looking to recapture that, uh, you know, that tag team gold with a new, uh, you know, with a new configuration. Yeah. Ooh, and a dragon screw from midnight from Knights. Gets flinged in into the turnbuckle. Ooh, and toss out of the ring. Right. Oh. Knights trying to employ the the weird dream magic and just gets tossed out of the ring. Yes. That's between Knights and Aaron Insurance. Yeah, and now it's between uh, the two people, uh, the two women. Two, two, very, two of the very exciting prospect X in, in hardcore nerdcore wrestling. Ooh. Ooh, and Sailor Moon just, just twisting Aaron Insurance up like a pretzel. You know, it's adding insult to injury. Uh, all right, Sailor Moon drags Aaron Insurance to the middle. Ooh, and a people's elbow from um, Sailor Moon. Oh, but Aaron Insurance responds with a dragon screw of her own. Again, you know, some good and improved ring generalship from Sailor Moon. Oh, but now she gets flung into the corner of Sexatronic. Oh, but she's able to get out of there. Tagging in Knights. Ooh, what a move from Aaron Insurance. Ooh, uh, but now our Midnight I Love is tying up Knights. Knights is able to break out, though. Ooh, and a big drop kick to the back of the head. Ooh, and catching Midnight in the camel coat. Uh, damn it. I will get it right next time. The camel toe? You were going to say camel toe, weren't you? I feel like, well, then again, with Midnight's Love, it's going to be more of a moose knuckle. But no, it's understood. And it is just absolute pandemonium outside of the ring. But tying up. Ooh, a big DDT on tonight. Ooh, and Aaron Esher's response by sliding in home. 
And a huge disc is from Midnight Love. Mm. Looks like Sexatronic is starting starting to commit command the momentum right now. Oh, they're all back in the ring though. Again, Knight's trying to utilize the dream magic, but it hasn't been working. Uh-oh. Knight is going for a ride. Ooh, and a Knight Ice 450. Tagging in Sailor Moon. And Aaron Insurance gets tagged in too. Yeah, you know, that was smart tagging in Aaron Insurance after you've taken a big hit like that. You don't think you can uh you don't think you can withstand one more hit, but uh, I, I don't know why Knight's tagged out for Sailor Moon. And a Falcon No, it wasn't a Falcon. It was just, ooh, and just another 450 from Amarin Insurance. Uh oh, rolling Aaron Insurance up. Oh, but Knights is able to break it up though. Ooh, and Sailor Moon, near fall, near fall. Uh, ooh, Knights and Midnight are oh, tying up. Oh wow! With the roll up, Aaron Insurance able to get the win while Knights was distracted. You know, they were just so busy fighting each other that they didn't realize that there was a match going on. It that was, that that was an incredible finish. It was an incredible finish, but but again, it just showed I again we talked about this. We talked about about Knight Ice's head head space as to whether or not it's going to get in the way, but it is. And you know, you got to understand and understandable while you rivalries might be intense and relationships might be fraught with with strife in moments like these you got to learn to be able to like put put some things aside be able to have a clear head but with that sexatronic is going to be going in forward into ooh, uh the title match against the mario bros yes that's going to be a fun one <clears throat> that it is that it is and we're seeing a lot of uh, turnover you know the mario brothers held on to their uh their belted pride pounding but, you know, even since then, we've had, like, a lot of turnover between the, uh, between, you know, the, the tag team champions. Yeah, and truth be told, it's not going to be the first time either member of Team Sexatronic has had to hand handle two mustachioed Italian working class men. Exactly. All right. Up next is a queen, another, another, another very sedate match. Queen Boo versus Bernadette. Ooh. You know, this is going to be an interesting match matchup because, again, you know, it might, you know, on paper, it might seem a little one-sided, you know. Obviously, Queen Boo came out, re you know, had her last just re recent big vi victory, albeit it to a bit of controversy against against Yoshi. And Ber while Bernadette has been on a bit of a dry streak, but, you know, Bernadette still has, you know, the, that, the momentum with, the working class having been doing well, this might might be her chance to finally e step up. Uh, both of these e's two will need e. This is both of theirs to lose. Queen Boo wants to keep that you know hot streak. Wants to get a hot streak going right now, whereas Bernadette wants to be able to beat her cold streak right now. Mm. So who do you got? Um, I'm gonna say Queen Boo. Queen Boo. You yeah. know what? I'm actually going to lean to Bernie on this one. I I think, I think Ing Bernie's in a powder keg kind of situation right now, and this might be the time I'm for her to go off. Hmm. Yeah. Like I said, you know, this uh, like we saw earlier, this what could be Toad's. You know, today earlier today was Toad's time to go off. So this could be it for Queen Boo. That it could be. That it could be. So let's get ready to snatch that weave. Mm-hmm. I use do that ghosts, right. Do ghosts even wear weaves? Um I, I don't know enough about wigs to answer Fair that enough. question. Audience, tweet us out. Tell us if go answer the question. Do do ghosts are wear weaves? Yes, do ghosts are wear weaves. I I'm right, pretty I, sure there's like a funny pun answer for that. Right. But um Yeah, there has to be like a funny pun answer for that. I'm sure there probably is. And here come Ums Queen Boo. Here Again, big victory e, e last time I she came up here. Bernie's gonna have to dig deep. Especially with how just like opportunistic and wily e Queen Boo has shown own in recent times. 
Yeah. Oh, they're really t trying to take it to one one another, but able both able to defend well. Oh, nice Irish whip from Bernie. Ooh, but a snapmare from Queen Boo in response. Another snapmare from Queen Boo. Ooh. Again, Queen Boo's starting to play dirty right now. But again, mechanics are used to uh, playing and playing dirty themselves, so it's gonna take more than that uh, to keep Bernie down. Yeah, like no amount of tricks has ever stopped Bernie before. Nope. Big snap at Mare from Queen Boo. Oh, and tying up Bernie. But Bernie's able to break out. Big snap air from Bernadette. Hey, they're starting to, to uh, just go back and forth. A little wave dash, a little wave dash. You got to respect it. Ooh, and a nice move from Bernie. Man, wait till we get... Man, we should use Fox McCloud as one of our, uh, like, non-canonical characters one of these months. And then we'll really be uh, fucking insane. Yeah. Wait, question. Has Fox, is, was, has Fox ever been in a three, in 3KB or no? Um, I think there was, like, a very... No, he was never portrayed in a 3KB show. But I think, like, I was watching a few of them. And there was, like, one where they just showed... It was, like, a picture-in-picture picture of, you know, Fox from one of the games... And he was, like, the implication was he was firing lasers at the wedding. Uh, okay. So would that, would that, would you say that would, that would qualify for a 3KB or no? No, I wouldn't say Fair that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ooh, and a nice snapmare from Bernadette. Oh, but Queen Boo able to break out. And going back for some dirty choking. But Bernie able to break out. Here's elbow. Catches Queen Boo and the Lion Tamer. Oh, tying up. Oh, Queen Boo's trying to get the momentum back. No, Bernie's seeming to try and favor that at turnbuckle. Ooh, and right onto the shoulder of Bernie. Oh, Bernie able to break out, though. Ooh, right into, ooh, the monkey wrench. Mmm. Fall in, fall out. But it's fine. The depends uh, ends will help uh, cushion the blow. Yeah. Ooh, and a single like Boston Crab. Oh, but Bernie gets caught in the walls of Jericho. You can tell it's Ooh. a Queen Boo move because she doesn't look directly at you while making the move. Mm. Uh, but Bernie able to kick out. Ooh, and a nice brain buster from Bernie. Oh, laying, laying out, out, out some blows. Going for the pin. It's only a two count, though. Oh, what Bernie got planned. Ooh, some vicious blows. A vertical suplex from Queen Boo! And Bernie's outside of the ring. Taking that time to recover. Again, circling around. Uh-oh. And Queen Boo drops Bernie with a pile driver. She's got some powerful thighs and even more powerful coochie. But only a near fall. It's only a near fall. Yeah. Bernie is still up and is starting to get her second wind. Another vertical suplex. Nice power slant and from Bernie. Ooh. And right again on the shoulder of Bernadette. Oh, That's Bernadette. on the collarbone. That's got to hurt. You know, Bernie is just sticking to what she knows. You know, she's a mechanic. She knows what to fix. No fancy European or, you know, Korean proprietary parts. Just a lot of slams and DDTs. Uh, yep. Some just, just some classic rust belt elf fighting. Oh, Bernie's calling for it. Ooh, and a side B from Queen Boo. Ooh, but Bernadette able to reverse. Ooh, and right into the Depends again. And Queen Boo takes it. Once again, another dirty finish from um, Queen Boo. 
Oof. You gotta feel for Bernie on that one. Yeah. The, the defense helped a bit, but that absorbency can only absorb orbs so much. Yeah, it, and more. It's probably better to absorb moisture, not uh, you know, pain. Yeah. Yeah. Not not, not, not yeah. shock. All right, and uh, for our last match before our, we take our little breaky break, uh, we have the undercard championship between we... Chris Redfield and Neil Breen. Now this one's gonna be exciting. Yeah, so you know who you got. It's hard to say because, in a way, both Chris Redfield and Neil Breen have shown to be almost kindred spirits. So, you know, there's definitely probably going to be a lot of respect coming into this match, but it's also probably going, there's probably going to be a lot of firework irks involved. Cause while on the one on hand and we've got, you've got Chris Redfield, the man who body blowed a boulder into submission. Of course. But then you yes. also got, but then you also got Neil Breen, the man who, the man who, who made an entire, just, just ocean of fish bent into his will, you know. Um, but all that being said, you know, you're looking at just both some very both just hard bodied, just just individuals who are both just the best at what they do. And what they and do just, isn't very nice. Definitely not nice at all. Yeah. So the question just comes: Who has who who is who is the one on? On that has like at the that that little bit of give, you know. I'm gonna say and, so. So here's my thing: is that Neil Breen won the uh, the the bad movie night canonization match at Pri the B bad movie night canonization battle royale. Sorry, at a Pride Pounding. So he's earned his spot here. However, Chris Redfield um, lost the uh, that lost the. Eric, people Eric's played in 3000 Brigade canonization match. Yeah, the it's it's a canonization match on canonization match. Yeah, but Chris Red didn't Chris Redfield didn't win. We just constantly used him out of convenience. Like, oh, there's a new Resident Evil game coming out. Oh, his twink boyfriend died today. Or, you know, oh, well, I guess tonight's match makes sense because Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is now available on Netflix. That is that that also that also so but you know you know something uh chris his story is that you're in a hardcore nerdcore wrestling is that of redemption yes he lost the canonization match but every time i'm we view use him he for even for convenience he is he has won and he has crawled that way back up to this match but that is not to be outdone by neil breen who went the distance in his bad movie night canonization match number one and then number two took it to fan favorite Jonesy Spencerson in a hell of in one hell of a match. And even when Neil Breen busted out everything he could, Jonesy was still standing. But at the end, Neil Breen was still able to get the job done. Mm. I just honestly, I don't know how I don't know where to call it. I'm gonna say Neil Breen. You know, I'm I'm mildly more towards Neil Neil Breen too. Because, like you said, because like you said, Chris has has does not have that perfect record, but it's just a hard one to call. But it's gonna be a hell of a match. It's gonna be a hell of a fucking match. That I do know. Oh yeah, I I am I am a quiver with anticipation. And without further ado, okay, just some further ado. Uh, we're gonna go cut to the ring. There we go. There's a the noise. There we go. Coming out first is Christopher Shreddington Redfield. Yeah, sadly, I don't think the uh, the pre-orders are available for that anymore. Aww. I did show you that shirt, right? Yes, you did. Okay, good. Pretty fucking great. But not to be outdone by... Neil Breen. Still astounded that he was in the uh, workshop. I'm, I was so happy he was in the workshop. Uh, but now the question comes, can one of these boys make it all the way to the pay-per-view in July and finally get 
a theme song worthy of their grandeur. Oh, but Chris starting things off. Again, Chris starting. Again, Chris now now leading in the momentum. I feel like Chris's theme should be made in heaven. No, probably. I don't know. I feel like "Keep Yourself Alive" would be the better Queen song because he is canonically a Queen fan, and I think if there's like any song off of uh, "Made in Heaven," the posthumous uh, post post you know that word, uh, yeah. Freddie Mercury album that Queen put out. Uh, you know, that's probably the only one that has any sort of pep to it or any sort of grandeur. Not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it's just vibes. Right. You're not looking to boogie. That's what I'm saying. Neil Breen trying to counter Chris with some dirty boxing, but Chris still able to withstand it. Chris commanding most of the momentum right now. But again, Chris needs to be care careful though. Neil Breen isn't isn't afraid to go oh the oh the distance like see the people he had to go through in the canonization match and see whom and then see with Jonesy oh going for the quick pin he he defeated the power of both Santa and Goldberg yeah and that's not an easy task to accomplish oh but Chris able to, to reverse the Irish whip both men just stalking each other Oh, and gets vertical suplex outside of the ring. Is it me or uh, does Neil Breen look kind of like Lupin the Third? It's fine. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Oh, and again, Neil Breen relying on some of that dirty boxing, just trying to soften up up the chin of Chris Redfield. His boulder-like chin. Yeah, and God is that chin like absolutely chiseled. Again, Neil Breen just taking it outside the ring. Again, not scared air to get dirty. Oh, and drops Chris Redfield out uh, onto the concrete. Oh, but Chris Revert versus with a low blow. Pins aren't allowed at just anywhere, Chris. You got to bring him to the ring. Yeah, big. Oh, Chris goes back into the ring. Oh, uh, okay. Neil, Neil Breen's trying to play some mind games right now. Oh, gets reversed. Oh, but Chris seems to have gotten the worst of it. Yeah, putting up his arms, but, you know, how how much effect is Neil Breen having on the boulder-like face of Chris Redfield? I, I, well, if, he, if I was Chris right, oh, he gets caught in the rear naked choke. He's not giving up, though. I mean, if I was Chris right now, I would hope he has some herbs on deck. Yeah. It's going to be a long night for him. Yeah. Oh, they're both going back and forth. Oh, Chris with the drop kick. Oh, but Neil Breen's back up. And just a discus chop. Again, both are just circling each other. Playing a very, very cerebral game. But a big shotgun drop kick from Neil Breen. Again. Chris dragging Neil back to the middle of the ring. Some big stomps to the back of the head, too. And a big suplex. And and Chris starting to get at, at the momentum back. Ooh, Ooh, nice block from Chris. And a nice reversal. Oh, he's calling for it. Tying up Neil Breen. Ooh, and a lariat to the back of the head. Another big punch from Chris. Uh-oh. Chris with a shining wizard. And a near fall. Neil Breen in is not going down that easy. Yeah, you need, like, Neil Breen is like a tyrant. You need a rocket launcher to kill him with that shit. Again, both men just looking exhausted after that collision. Ooh, once again, and now Neil Breen using Chris's own strategy against him and just trying to soften up just the big mass that stands in front of you. Uh, but Neil Breen, he was slow. Ooh, 
Ooh, and a quick sleeper hole from Chris. Keeps Neil Breen on the defensive. But are we going to see much from it? We need that follow through. If the match doesn't end. The match only ends when uh, they're fully knocked out or you get them down for a three count. Nice couple of blows to, uh, to Neil Breen's melon. But Neil Breen ready for the tackle. I again, Chris with those, uh, you know, like a lot of melon punting here. This might as well be a boxing match for all it's turning out to be. One. Ooh, that was a close one. Another near fall. Two, another, oh, another near fall from Chris. Uh-oh, what's Neil Breen calling for? And a coup de gras from Neil Breen. One, two. Only a two count. Chris is still in this. But he is absolutely exhausted. How much longer can he last like this? And a reversal. And outside the ring they go. Chris usually taking that. Uh, Chris needs that time to recover because it's been a long match. Let me tell you. And here they go, exchanging blows. Chris gets the better of it. Ooh, and a Pele kick from Neil Breen, who goes up to the top ropes. And another curb stomp on the back of the... On Chris Redfield's back. Can, oh, okay. Chris barely manages to get up. He's going to need to do something soon, or else he's not going to be able to make it through to the end. What's this? He's going outside of the ring and just throws Neil Breed into the apron. Chris is taking this time to soften up Neil Breed on the outside of the ring here, but the, the ref isn't counting. Oh, and Neil Breed with a sit down pile driver. This is just two men slugging it out on the side of the ring here. This is more of a street fight than anything, actually. Okay, Chris goes back inside. More, more, okay, more rope mind games. I'm back. Sorry about, about that, folks. Uh, Breda, HCNCW's, uh, Network's been not the, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, that, uh, that's fair. Here's been a little bit of an issue since, uh, recent circumstances. Yeah. Anyways, how's the match been going while I was gone? I, it's been go, you know, it's been a slobber knocker as they say. Um, oh, and it looks like Chris, Chris Redfield tapped pack. out and Neil Breen retains the undercard championship. Wow. Again, another big defense from the newcomer. Neil Breen is really putting his money where his mouth is here. Yep, but you know what? He's, again, he's not, you know, he, when you're a man who claims that you are the best at what you do, you show up. Yeah, and, and I think he has been showing up for the past little bit now. So anyway, we're coming in on the hour mark. So we're going to take a little breaky break. And in the meantime, you guys can get your snacks, take a little pee break, uh, go go get what you need, get up, just stretch, hydrate, you know? Just Yeah. Just, yeah. All right, so we'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. I'm eating some nuts. Hi, I'm back too. What's that? I said hi, I'm back too. Okay. Uh. Okay, cool. We're actually going pretty fast, but like I also have a lot to do, so um, I'm not that upset if we end up a little bit early. That's fine. I'm I'm good. I'm fine with that too. All right, cool. All right, we are lowering music, and we are starting again in three, two, one. Hold on, actually. Wait, no, wrong view. Because it's the time of the show where I promote shit. Uh. So yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you all for watching. Now, if you can also help participate and build the roster for Hardcore Nerd Core Wrestling for one dollar a month, uh, you get every new song I do, and you get a you get to suggest a wrestler for the Hardcore Nerd Core Wrestling. That's anything I've been a part of. It could be an NPC from RPG Pals Club, a video game character from Three Thousand Brigade we haven't featured yet. As long as it's in the workshop or just like it's relatively achievable, we can still do it. And for five dollars a month, uh, we can uh, we'll help you create a wrestler. You'll get to work with me, and you get to pick like a theme song and all that. And uh, you also get the stems for every song I do. It's still a little bit early to find out what the song is going to be, and I am going to have to put a post on my Patreon to decide the next cover, uh, the cover for next month rather, since I've been alternating. But uh, for next month's song. But speaking of next month, next month I'm going to be playing at Megaplex. Uh, it's going to be August 6th. I'm sorry. So it's going to be like midnight on Friday, aka Saturday at midnight. Uh, and you get for the twenty dollar tier. That means uh, that's like the broski tier, which is if you're at a, if we're at the same con. Just hook me up afterwards. I'll buy you a drink. We'll chill for an hour. I got my switch. I got. I'll probably bring some magic decks with me. We'll we'll have some, we'll have a little bit of fun there. So uh, also, I'm doing uh, so Megaplex, then Mizucon the month after. Uh, trying to get something booked for October, but it looks like November. I will be playing Anime EY again. I just need to find out the details. Speaking of details, uh, we might actually be doing a thing at Mizucon. We just need to set it up with. Uh, AJ and see what he has to say. Yes. Also, uh, the, the album you see in the top right here, Bastard Mania, you can buy it at rhythmbastard.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can also buy my, uh, you can also buy a bunch of merch from uh, sh my Threadless store at shop.rhythmbastard.rocks. And of course, for all the latest news, you can go to my website, rhythmbastard.rocks, because I rock so hard, I have to put it in the URL. There we go. That link goes there. And we all go here. There we are. How Hello. Hey, did you enjoy your break? I, I did. I did. Got me some more water and I'm hydrated and ready to... Uh... Ready to rumble? Yeah. Well, not like we're ready to rumble, but I mean like, you know, the I, other we're ready to watch other people rumble, I guess is what we're going for. Yeah. Hell of a defense by Neil Breen. Yep, really nice, strong defense against a strong opponent, you know? Yep. And the, the fun, fun doesn't stop here, folks. It does not stop here. Yes, up next, we have Todd and Katana, uh, two wrestlers we haven't seen in a while. Nope, no, nope, we have not, we have not. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm not really going to put any... Um any like credence on to uh, either side, because I think what really happened is that, like I said, with a lot of these matches, we're seeing, you know, talent come out of nowhere. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, Bayonetta topple strong bad. We've seen, uh, you know, Toad win over, um, uh, 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 Tracer. Tracer. Yes. I, we saw the, the sexotronic with a comfort behind victory. So, I think anything's fair game here. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, these two competitors, we haven't seen them in a while. They want probably want to, want to impress. Yeah. So let's let's see where this goes. All right, we're coming to the ring. Neither of them have theme music. No, Katana might. It, it, it's fine. 
As long just if you want the theme music, just make it to the pay per view. Exactly. Instead, there's just going to be awkward silence. It's fine. There we go. Oh, there we go. That song always slaps. That it does. See, it just slapped right now. Yeah. You know, and that's one, and you know, theme song choice is so important if you want to get the crowd behind you. Exactly. And let the battle begin. Ooh, nice Irish whip from Todd. Ooh, a big suplex. Mm. And a nice, a nice twisting neck breaker. But Todd needs to be careful. This isn't the first. It's not the first time I'm Katana's had to square up to draconic uh, uh, individuals before, and it's not going to be the last. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, you know, she fought the Burninators on the the future Femme Fatales. Um, Todd was actually part of that as well. So I mean, both of the I mean, again, like tonight, we're seeing. You know, people who have experienced, uh, you know, success in their team runs now try to make their case for why they should be singles champions. And, you know, hey, we're we're all down. We're down to clown for it. We want if you got if you got something, show it to us. Ooh, and a big just slam from Todd, who's taking his time to catch his breath in the middle of the ring. Again, smart move, smart move. Ooh, and an insiguri from Katana. And we are all down with the clown here. But Todd responds with a German suplex. Elbow drop. Oh, but Katana's back up. Oh, but Todd now getting the momentum. Ooh, Katana able to reverse, though. Ooh, and reverses the Poison Rana. Todd reverses the Poison Rana and catches his Katana in the walls of Jericho. Not able to kick out, though. Carefully selecting his curb stomps, I see. Yeah, as you would, as you would. As they're going back and forth. Ooh, but Katana gets the better of this. And now just raining the haymakers onto Todd. But he follows Ooh. up with the GDT. Uh, Todd's up. What's he got planned? And a flying crossbody! That was a near fall, though. All that dragon on flying onto your chest that can't be good for the rib health no oh, no not at all oh and he bridges nope another near fall oh but katana catches him with an insiguri todd able to kick out though going in oh and a papa perk and rana todd able to kick out though and another Insiguri. Katana's trying to get the momentum back. But a kick out from Todd. They're circling. And Katana just stomping a blood hole in, into Todd. It's like, you know, when you have boots that pointy and they're raking against your face, you can't help but just feel a little worse for wear. Ooh, but Todd able to break out of the knee bar. Uh oh, get Todd on a mounts Todd, but Todd not able to reverse. Listen, don't let his dorky attire fool you. He can still fight. If uh -oh. Chapo Trap House taught me anything, is that uh, podcasters know how to throw down. Oh, but Todd goes for the pin. Oh, an earball for Katana. She is absolutely groggy, but able to reverse the Irish whip. Going back in. And another pop of Hurricane Rana. Oh. But only down Todd. for one. And a power slam from Todd. Oh, he's going back up top. And another flying crossbody. That's only good for two, though. Oh, but... Katana starting to lay down the combos. Ooh, and mounting Todd from behind. I mean, he has to give up. He has to make his way to the, 
the, the rope or else that whaling is still legal. Todd going back up top. And a third crossbody. Katana looking absolutely worse for wear right now. And another big suplex from Todd. Todd's back up though. Counters with a snapmare. Now she goes up top. Into a flying elbow. Oh, catches Todd with another knee bar. Flying elbow? That looked like a soaring elbow. Hmm. Okay, well, you know, oh, those fans of Katana are able to generate a win. She probably got herself a little extra airtime on that. Mm. Oh. Now she's hammering away A into the head of Todd. Uh-oh, what's Katana got planned? Ooh, a backbreaker! Oh, oh, God. If this is Mortal Kombat, we'd see the spine breaking in eight. That is an x-ray move I've seen one. And another soaring elbow. Oh, Todd able to reverse, though. Oh, it gets flung into the turnbuckle. Ooh, but Todd reverses with a spinning neckbreaker. Uh-oh, what's Katana got out in mind? And another flying elbow. Oh, squaring up. Getting flung into the, into the ropes. Oh, Todd's running in. And a monkey flip from Todd. Oh, well, now they're, now they're going back and forth. Who's going to get the bet? As for this one, though. And Katana feeds Todd a super kick. And oh. another flying elbow. Uh-oh. Into the Scorpion Deathlock. And Todd has no choice but to tap. Flawless victory. Absolutely flawless. What a match from Katana. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a, that was a fun match. You know, you a, a lot of back and forth there. But you know what? Oh. Katana Katana's used to the blood sport. That she is, that that she is. You know, again, commiserations for Todd. He put up a great fight, but you know, just it was just Katana's night tonight. Mm. Yeah. I, you know, I, do you think there's anything that uh, Todd could have done differently? You know, I was looking at just a lot of his, his maneuvers. You know, he was doing a really good a job with, you know, with the top rope and the flying cross os bodies. Uh, the only thing I could really I could really think was just he he just needed to get a little bit better with the ground game. I mean, he showed some strong submission work, but he just it just it wasn't enough to handle old Katana. Um, I do feel like that third cross body, though, on the back versus ver versus on her stomach did was a bit was a bit of a deciding factor there because you notice todd didn't get edited 100 percent. he actually got a little hurt hurt himself on that one mm. but katana was just able to weather the storm and get the best of of todd yeah i i mean like todd todd is still you know todd's still pretty green he's used to tougher guys like strong bad and um uh, Strong Bad and Male Bowser doing the work for him. So, um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, he might be used to uh, maybe like not as used to being in the driver's seat. Yeah, but you know, and that's, but that's the thing with hard, with hardcore nerdcore wrestling. You got to be prepared air for anything. You got to be able to have a game plan for whoever it is you're going to be going up against, you know? Mm. That's true. That's true. Okay, so up next, we have. Trios Championship between R.E.D. and B12. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, nice, exciting matchup. Uh, you know, R.E.D. has been, you know, again, have, have definitely been catching their stride. But at the same time, B12 is starting to slowly get the, get the momentum. They're, they've been testing out different comps in the trios. And they're coming into this with what they feel like is going to be their best S go. And there's still, you know, like what, eight other boys we've yet to see. So it could be a This is a message to all you haters and losers out there that spent the past week thinking you could get one over on the Awoken. 
And sure, it's not like you even deserve a response considering that you're all so stupid that you'd buy into the fake news saying that my best friend, Sonic the Hedgehog, a truer patriot than any of you out there, would be on our true president's new social media posting anti-Q and anti-Trump messages. <laughs> all of you rubes out there thinking that. What morons. And yet here I am responding to you. You know why? Because all of you idiots think that you're so smart and clever. Oh, oh, isn't it so funny that the Awoken lost to Knights? That they were able to lose a three-on-one fight? You think I'm mad? You think I care? Let me tell you something. You're the one that's mad! You're the one that cares! I'm not mad! <laughs> if that kid you see, I'm actually laughing. You know why? Because you idiots can't see the bigger picture. You never have been able to, and you never will be able to. But me, I'm a genius, in case you forgot. And I can see two things that are clearer as day. First of all, Knights, you got lucky. And the next time you run into the Awoken, you're dead. I can assure you of that. But here's another little secret for you all. Sometimes even the best of geniuses let things slip up. Even the smartest code has errors. Ever heard of a known shippable? That means that even in the most perfect things, sometimes things will go wrong and screw up. And that couldn't explain things further than what happened last week. Sure, would you rather bot failed? He made a mistake. But you know what? That's the best part about things. Is that sometimes you need to not succeed so that you can see where things are going wrong and you can adjust. And now we've adjusted. And Would You Rather Bot is more perfect and stronger than he's ever been. You want to see that? Well, how about we show you? How about we show you on Raymond, the young lion? Oh, poor Raymond. You came so close to beating Dinoff's students last week, only to fail. Just like the rest of your NPC Pals Club idiot friends. We're going to show you exactly what happens when you come up against the Awoken. We're going to show you by putting you up against Would You Rather Bot and showing you just how powerful he is. And then you'll all stop laughing. Nobody will be laughing ever again. We are the Awoken! Expect the storm. Oh, wait, what was the... Oh, no. Do, do, oh, God damn it. I'm sorry. I was told there'd be no shenanigans. Yeah. Son of a bitch. And now Ernie's frozen. Great. More hacking. Thank you, Tails, you bitch. Oh, oh God. So, so uh, apparently you're about to witness the murder of a small child here on Hardcore Nerdcore Wrestling. Um, you know, anyway, Raymond is just getting his ass handed to him by Would You Rather Bot. I guess, you know, like Tails said, it's all a matter of adjustments. Uh-oh, and this is in a cage, so there's no interference possible. Raymond barely managing to give himself some space from Would You Rather Bot, who has been on a tear through the uh, Hardcore Nerdcore Wrestling and another Gorilla Press. Uh, also, I would like to uh, further clarify Tales' statement. Uh, it turns out that there was a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog porn on the website Getter. Uh, I mean, clearly, you know, like uh, the Sexatronic, Sonic can't help himself when, uh, you know, he has a big old booty with a tiny little waist and a round thing in his face and he gets sprung. Or other people get sprung at Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Raymond and Would You Rather Bot exchanging blows with a big discus from... Would you rather bot? Oh, God. 
lots of punches to the back of the head. I don't know how much more of this I can watch. I mean, Raymond is surviving and managed to get a Hurricane Rana on uh, Would You Rather Bot. But, okay, he, he is making mounting some sort of comeback. You know, at this point, it's just a matter of Raymond's safety. Raymond is a baby beholder, and I don't know uh, how baby beholders handle shit. Okay. Fuck, fuck. Okay, I'm back. Like, what the hell just happened? I, I, I don't know. It, uh, the, the tails bitched about shit again, and then the screen went oh. dark, and now we have Would You Rather Bot and Raymond in a cage. Why? What the? Yeah, I don't know either. But, uh, just, all right, let's take another look here at the. Oh, God. Okay, there you are. Ooh, okay. Good okay, job, fuck. Oh. Okay, and uh, Raymond, Raymond gets getting... The, yeah, and the Peach Special. We I'm, at least I'm have sorry, the Peach... Just... We're trying to ground ourselves with the Peach Special here. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm flustered. And I'm fucking sick and tired of this shit. Why do we have to keep putting up, up with this? I, listen, I, I'm trying to, you know, reverse the code. But apparently, just, this shit just keeps happening. I mean... Why do we, how, this, this fucking, this fucking guy over and over again, we're trying to run a fucking wrestling show and he's the one on deciding to, you know, not only like use our show for a platform for his bullshit, but now he's getting, he's in, he's putting our, our workers at risk is trying to take people out and all for what to feed his fucking ego. Yeah, it turns out he's a fucking little nerd bitch baby who probably posts on not even 4chan, but like 8chan or, you know, they're probably up to 16 by now, 16 chan by now, which is uh, all the girls we ogle should be younger than this chan. I just, I just, um, you know, I just, I feel like there's, we, we've just, where we get to, we need to, we have gotten to a, Nice code oath, oath breaker from Raymond. And a near and fall. A near fall. A near fall you know would you rather bot? You know what? The little guy is he's coming in here. He is not happy. He knows what the I'd rather not crew and the Awoken have put his friends, the RPG Pals Club, through. So he's not going down without a fight, and you gotta respect it. Yeah, and he is the Empreg baby of Xanathar from the Xanathar Guild. So you know he's gotta be tough, tough mentally and physically. To have that yep. kind of mobster legacy. Both of them exchanging blows. Raymond getting the best of this now. Raymond going back. Oh, with the drop kick though. We want a big suplex from Would You Rather Bot. Big again a big slant am from Would You Rather Bot. Oh, but a drop toll hole from um, Raymond. And a snap suplex from Raymond. Oh no, but the little guy is slow to get up. Ooh, but Cat plays, was playing possum and catches what you rather bot. Ooh, and a backstabber. That's gonna do sneak attack damage. Yeah, but ooh, looks like, uh, but looks like, uh, uh, uh would you rather bot casted rage? Cause he's the barbarian class. Okay. Again, both men, both old wrestlers are exhausted. Uh oh, Raymond's going up top. Oh, and what a 450! Near fall for Raymond. The little guy is is having the fight of his life right now. Oh, but it's not enough. As would you rather bot pins him down What's he doing? for the three? Uh, no. Rather, what you doing? Would you rather bot stop? Would you rather bot no? Oh, just. Why did you get? Why did they give a rating for that? A child was had the shit beaten out of him. So Let's give a rating one. for that, actually. So this is the shit. So this is what we. So so this is how we want to go. This is how we want to fucking and go. You know what? I. You know what? RB. I. I know we we have like a very specific job, and all this. 
but I something has to be fucking said. I'm sick and fucking tired of Tails constantly hijacking our stream, sabotaging our shows. All we're trying to do is entertain people, you know? But he's coming on here, spreading his little in, incel, tiny dick. I never touched a woman in my entire life. I bullshit. It, and he's injuring people. He is fucking injuring people. He's keeping them in cages. It is not right. It is not fair. Somebody needs to fucking say a something. And you know what? If he wants to call it, think himself as like he's some kind of good, like this great, all-powerful fucking leader, how about you do some dirty work or yourself, Alf Tales? How about that? Yeah, you know what? The best thing to do with a uh, conservative is you just beat the shit out of them because chances are, like Tales, they're lumpy incels or they're lumpy married men who, like, haven't been touched in a while, and you can just beat the shit out of them. There's, like, some lady I, I saw on Twitter who tried to lure some guy's dog into traffic, and, you know, she was, I don't, and, like, you can just bitch slap her, because what are you, like, what's she going to do? Who going to call the cops? And you, no, that's where you go, like, are you, tr are you offended that I just slapped you? Because if you say, are you offended, then they're going to respond like Tails did when I'm not crying, I'm actually laughing. Yeah, fucking, fucking laughing. That if he keeps, honestly, if he keeps this shit it up any fucking more, or dude's getting his te dude is gonna get at his teeth force fed to him. But that's the thing, we don't know where he is because he just like broadcast hacks to broadcast the promos. Anyway, that's the game. You know what? Let, let's ignore him. I, I know, like, don't feed the trolls and don't ban. Yeah, let let's find our Zen Goose Fraba, Goose Fraba. Do 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 yeah okay I'm good okay yes yes honey we're good we could have another and we will have another because we are gonna have our our main event for tonight is the Illuminatos Trio spelt I'm still a little astounded that we kept that name you know I'm I'm perfectly honestly you know what we could use as much levity as we can right now yeah. Um. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh. Let's see. What. What's another. What's another funny thing? Ron DeSantis is still dead in our canon. Ah. <laughs> what a fucking loser. Yeah. Uh. Fucking zombified bitch baby. Yeah. Zombified. Yeah. Like I. I <laughs> Man, we should have Chris. If Chris Redfield won zombie, Ron DeSantis probably would have been the next uh, opponent for the undercard belt because <laughs> he kills zombies. The problem is that gets kind of problematic, especially in Resident Evil 5. Mmm. R.E.D. versus B12. Who you got? Uh, I'm giving it to R.E.D. Yeah. I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe we could find uh, B12. I'm going to say. I mean, we've seen upsets before, but I, yeah, I just I, don't. Tonight's the night for upsets. You know, tonight's the night for upsets. So here we are. Let's cut to the match. Right now. Yeah. Fight. Yep, and guess what? It's fucking fucking landmines. We always have landmines. You always love to see it. Up, oh, spy able to break out out of uh, B3's uh, grip. Up, oh, B3 able to hit reach the ropes though. Ooh, nice body check. Nice body check from the spy. Tagging a demo man. And the one with the hat, is that that's B A, B A. B A. Yes, the B one with the pretty boy hair is B six. And uh, the one outside of the ring is B twelve. The ball yes, one. Because I, I did my re I did my research and I remember who who is who. B B B three E would will you would you get with me? B6, he picks up sticks. Yeah. BA, he's really great. Uh, let's see. And he's uh, B12. Girl. And he's B12. Yeah, just B12. Girl, you need, need a, a shot, shot of B12. B12. You know you, you do. do. God, that's going to sound really awkward. Yeah. 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 And, uh, AKA, Japanese, the one, can, the one un that can sing, the one with the penis of a man. Yes. And I think... B12 was the sleepy one? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So I, 
so I did so I so all that so that a uh, couple of minutes of research didn't wasn't uh in vain. Yeah. Anyways, Devilman's back in. Yep. Squaring up with B6. Yep, and he goes right into the landmine. Nice DDT from B6, and another DDT from B6. But he's got to be careful. The Devil Man has a high threshold for pain. And Scout gets tagged in, and now squaring up. And Devil Man gets an assisted power bomb. Ooh, but Scout uppercut. Uh, it's B6. Six. B6. Penis. Oh, going for the pin. Scout kicks out at one. Oh, and outside the ring. He is at the mercy of B12. Yeah. Oh, but so is B8, who's at the mercy of R.E.D. Yeah, you know, it's just a matter of positioning. Who has the better position when everything is sorted out? Big face buster from the demo man. Ooh, and catches B8 in the Red Link special. B8 but, really is great. Yeah. Oh, but the scout is just getting absolutely hammered. Ooh, but a but a bulldog uh, onto B6. And scout, scout finally and, makes his way into the ring. Ooh, and what a power bomb um, from the demo man. Spy getting tagged in. And just oh, barely I misses the tag. Oh, B3. E dropping in the spy. Tying up. And R.E.D. able to break it up, though. Ooh, and a nice ice uh, 3D from R.E.D. 3 R.E.D., there we go. R.E.3.D. R.E.3.D., yes. Again. Ooh, and spy getting flung into the barbed wire again. Ooh, but the roll up. Ooh, that's a close one. Yup. Oh, and B3 getting dropped with another power bomb. Oh, and Spy is there to capitalize. Oh, but B3 reverses. B3 is just too big to pull that kind of stuff on. B6 getting tagged back in, as is the Demo Man. Oh, Demo Man circling in on B6. Oh, but gets trucked. You know, Demo Man, while having a good high threshold for pain, his death perception and his reaction time, though, is still a significant weakness. Oh, yeah. but tying up B6 in the knee bar. Ooh, but you know, scout. you can't, but I think even with all those disadvantages, you just can't deny that, like, Demo Man has fortitude and just, you know, the, the chutzpah where it matters. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of fortitude, a lot of chutzpah. Uh, a lot of explosive power, but uh, able to retreat and tag the spy back in. And they caught him in another other RE3D. Oh, but B6 responds with a DDT. Got Scout in the center of the ring. Oh, but Scout pushing in, in B6 into the RED's corner. Went into the barbed wire he goes. Nice shoulder check from the spy, who ties up B6, who has to tap out. B6 is eliminated. It's a three on three on two. Ooh, but a big spine buster from B3. RD was able to break it up. And another RE3D, this time between the Demo Man and Scout. Oh, B3 and Spy are squaring up to one another. Ooh, and a big... And we're just back to back discus from both. And Devil Man gets tagged in. And able to save the spy. Oh, but the spy eats a snapmare from B3. Ooh, hits Devil Man with a Rainmaker, but Rain but Devil Man with a dropped hold. Rolling B3 up. Oh no, it's just B8 down to B8 now. Yeah. He's gonna have to show how really great he is. Oh, but Devil Man able to get his feet onto the ropes. He may have Ooh. the penis of the man, but does he have the heart of a warrior? Oh, they were able to break it up, though. Again, don't necessarily count BA out, out just yet. And, you know, we've seen upsets happen. 
Ooh, and a big DDT from B8. Oh, the demo man is absolutely groggy. Ooh, and a spinning neck breaker from B8. Who flings demo man into the barbed wire? Oh, but the demo man reverses. Everybody's going to the barbed oh. wire. Oh, tagging the spy back in. Ooh, and the spy responds with a suplex. Oh, B8 able to reverse. And flings Spy into uh, the landmine. Another Irish whip. Drop kick from B8. Another Irish whip. Ooh, it wouldn't be three. Uh, it wouldn't be hardcore nerdcore wrestling if it didn't have a botched uh, Irish whip. You know, it's vintage. Oh, B8 drops down two times, uh, three times, and another botched Irish whip. <laughs> yup, yup. That is elevated hardcore nerdcore wrestling. Oh, like, wow. This is peak hardcore nerdcore wrestling. Oh, my God. Oh, and Spy would... Wait. Oh, that's a near fall. That is a near fall. Uh, okay, that cheered me up a little bit after the fucking tail shit. And B8 has no choice but to tap. Your winners. R-E-D. R-E-D retain. What a retention. All three of them coming out of this bloodied up, but they had a fantastic match. Yeah, it was really something else. What a match. What a match. What a night. What a match. 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 What a mighty good match. Mm -hmm. that, that, song, that was so good. I feel like singing. Sometimes that's all you can do, man. Yeah, especially in this world where Kitsune will just hijack your stream for no reason. We have to invest in some cybersecurity. Yeah. But yeah. 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 So it uh, looks like we do have, uh, you know, the, the tag team championship for next week's setup. Uh, uh, let's see. The Mario Bros fighting Sexatronic. Uh, that's going to be a, one hell of a fight for, for the Mario Bros. You know, they've been on a on a good streak right now, you know, but at the same time, once again, uh, both Aaron Insurance and Midnight Love have had extensive experience dealing with two strong, mustachioed, Italian, working class men. Hmm. So, yeah, just getting all hot and sweaty with them. Yup, yup. Getting all hot, hot and like rubbing your bodies together and, you know. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. We also have another undercard belt, that and we uh, next week we also have the one number one uh, contendership for uh, the three thousand brigade belt. So that's going to be a fun oh, watch. That's that is going to be absolutely exciting. Yeah, I cannot wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to wrap up a little early tonight because uh, you know we're not going to let tails hijack our shit again. It's not going to happen. It already happened once. Not going to happen again. No. Hashtag mission accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yes, we got him. And now what we got to do is freeze frame. So I know where to cut.